I'm sure that you remember spending unreasonable hours poring over books in preparation for your upcoming exams, trying to absorb as much information as possible by highlighting, rereading, or making new notes. But have you ever stopped to wonder whether these are really the most efficient methods to learn the information for your final exams while freeing up time from your long studying hours? Hey, my name's Arnav, and in this video, I'll be showing you the most functional and powerful flashcard app on the planet for learning just about anything. Anki. Here are the timestamps for the different sections of the video in case you want to skip ahead at any point. So firstly, here's a quick overview of what Anki actually is. Anki has made studying substantially more effective and less stressful for millions of students worldwide. Here's how to leverage the benefits of active recall and spaced repetition to improve your work studying for exams or learning new content of any sort. In case these terms are new to you, here's a quick breakdown. Active recall is essentially a fancy word for testing yourself. It involves practicing the retrieval of information from your memory, the act of which in itself greatly strengthens the connections in your brain. If you think about it, this actually makes a lot of sense. In a written exam, you're often tested on your ability to recall content. So practicing the process of regurgitating that information frequently is the best way to ensure that you can do this quickly and efficiently in the exam condition. Spaced repetition is essentially putting active recall into practice at systematic intervals. Feel free to pause and ponder this cool graph that shows how an individual's memory retention of facts naturally declines over time and the effect of reviewing information at increasingly greater intervals. This is also known as the forgetting curve. Now we know how Anki works, let's jump into the app and have a look at how you can set up your flashcards and then subsequently use them. So the very first thing you'll need to do is install Anki. It's free on Windows and Android devices, however it does cost £22 or $25 on the iOS store. I would suggest trying it out on the Android or Windows platforms first to test it out, get a feel for it and uh, just tell whether you can really enjoy using it. Installing on Windows is quite simple. You're going to go to apps.ankiweb.net, which is the official Anki website. Click on the blue download button. Click on the latest version of Anki for your operating system, uh, so Windows 10 or 11 for my case. Click it and you're going to get an installer. You're going to click this installer and follow the instructions. They're quite straightforward and you should have the Anki app installed onto your computer. All right, so once you're into Anki, you're going to be seeing something a little bit like this. Um, of course, you might not have the same background and add-ons I've added here, but the basic premise should be the same. The first thing you want to do is press this button at the bottom of your screen, which is the create deck button. Give your new deck a name. For instance, I like to categorize my decks in accordance to the qualification I'm studying, which is of course GCSEs at the moment. Um, and then all of my subjects below those, and within the subjects, I'll split it up into the different topics of the subject to keep myself organized. For example, I've split up computing or computer science into paper one and paper two, computer systems and computational thinking. And within these, I've split up my papers into the different topics within those papers so that I can easily make flashcards for each of those subtopics and revise each one for assessments or tests that I would have on certain topics but not all of them. To demonstrate this, I'll bring you through step by step the process of creating a new deck. So let's create one called test right here and close up my existing GCSEs folder. As you can see, there are no new or due cards. That means that there are simply no flashcards in this deck. Now, to add flashcards to this deck, you're going to click Add or the A button on your keyboard. Next, you wanna ensure that the correct deck is selected so that your flashcards don't go into the incorrect deck and end up messing up your organization. So in this case, my target deck is just test. And you want to make sure that your type of flashcard is either on basic or closed. I'll explain the difference between those in a minute. So, for example, we could just say There we go. Of course, your flashcard won't be like this. You can add all of the fancy customization and content that you want. Um, but just for my purposes, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to click Add to add that flashcard to our deck. And we're done. We can close up the Add Flashcards tab, and now you can see that we have one new flashcard added to this deck. We'll now click onto the Test deck, and we'll see the Study Now button. Of course, 
we click it and we'll get this message which shows us the front of the card only. Of course, we now see the front of the flashcard and if we want to see the back after we've tried to recall it in our minds, we can now see the back of the card as well. Based on this, we can now rate the card on how we found it. We'll click again or the key one on our keyboards if we couldn't get the card at all. Hard if we found it quite difficult to recall or couldn't recall the whole thing. We'll click good if we managed to recall it in a decent amount of time and managed to get most of the details, if not all of the details. And finally, easy. This is a button that I tend not to use too often because if the topic is that easy, then I shouldn't really be making a flashcard on it. However, if you find that a flashcard is coming up too often and you know the content very well, don't waste time with it coming up again in the space repetition algorithm. So to demonstrate further, let me show you an example with my computer science deck. Let's say I have a test coming up for paper one and I wanted to revise systems architecture. I would simply click on study now and answer this question that comes up. Of course, I'll think in my head of the four different registers that I know of, as in brackets, I tend to put the number of items required for that flashcard, recall all of this information, and based on how I felt, I would give that a rating. So for example, I would give that one a good rating because I was able to recall the information. Now, here's an example of how to make a close flashcard type. First, you go up to the type tab when you create a new flashcard. Go to close. You might not have all of these options, but just go to close and no other suffix. Type in your text. Now, the difference here is that you can select a few words as a part of your flashcard to hide selectively by clicking this button or holding Control shift c to close that out of your flashcard. What this means is that you'll see the flashcard when you preview it as just this part and not the closed part and you have to try and recall the blanked out parts. You also have a back extra which essentially means any extra text that you want to add and you want to show along with the answers when they're revealed. Keep in mind that you can also hide selectively other parts of the front of the flashcard. For example, I could select the words text on hold Control shift and C and have two closed selections. What this means is that at any one time, a flashcard will only show up hiding either the words a flashcard or the words text on, which means that I can selectively work out which parts of the closed flashcard I need to focus on. And to quickly preview this flashcard, you can see here that the last part of my flashcard has been blanked out. I need to try and recall it. Click show answer, it shows up along with the extra text that I wanted to show in the back extra of the closed card. So now that I've shown you the basics, we're gonna get on to add-ons. One of the main advantages of using Anki over other platforms such as Quizlet is that its code is open source. This means that developers can create plugins that enhance your user experience with Anki and you can install this in a very easy and simple way. Firstly, you're going to go to Tools, add-ons and you should be greeted with this window. Click the get add-ons button, click browse add-ons and finally you should be back on ankyweb.net. Now there are hundreds of add-ons available and you might want to do some research about which ones you think will work best for your workflow. An example of an add-on that is quite widely used and one that I would definitely recommend is Review Heatmap. Review Heatmap is a simple add-on that shows you which days you've done your reviews and how many you've done, which is indicated by the colour of the square of that day. The darker the square, the less reviews you've done, and the lighter the square, the more. Now, to install this add-on, you're going to simply scroll down to the bottom of the page, select this add-on code, copy it, and paste it into this box here. Click OK, and your download will be complete. Click OK to apply your changes, close out of this window, and restart Anki. I do have two quick tips about how you should use Anki, however, since you can't just make flashcards on absolutely anything and everything and put insane amounts of detail. Number one is that you should only make flashcards for subjects that it is suitable. As you can see, I have made a deck for each subject. However, some subjects such as maths, I found it better to revise using other methods rather than flashcards since it's less about memorization and more about understanding and doing practice. That's why I use practice papers instead of Anki. However, it does work very well for some subjects, such as Aryan philosophy. Learning quotes and key terms is a breeze, 
and honestly, I wish I knew about it earlier for my previous exams. My second tip is to not put too much detail into your flashcard. So here is an example of a flashcard that I created for RE. And as you can see, I've split everything into bullet points and then sub bullet points. And I've set the number of main bullet points in a small bracket here so that it's easier for me to identify if I've hit all of the required points for that card. I've also made some parts of the flashcard underlined and I make certain parts of the question bold just to emphasize the most key points and the parts I need to learn word for word. As a quick disclaimer, I just want to mention a few disadvantages of using Anki for your flashcard. Now, you need to use Anki almost every single day or very often at least to keep your streaks up and avoid having a very large backlog of reviews left for just before your exams. Another general disadvantage of using flashcards as a whole is that they tend to encourage memorization and not understanding. You can just rope learn all of the answers to the questions on your flashcard and go into the exam like that. However, the problem with that is your exam will not be testing you on the exact questions on your flashcards and instead you have to manipulate the information that you've learned and truly understand it to be able to answer the long form questions, especially in subjects such as English, religious studies and business studies. Overall, Anki does work if you're consistent over a long period. It's been an absolute godsend for me and it's one of the primary methods of revision for my assessments or even exams for the end of years or mocks. Best of all, it's free on most platforms and you can even import and export decks that your friends have created or ones that you have found online to make your revision even easier. I really hope this helped you out. If you have any more questions, comment them down below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. Also make sure to like and subscribe for the algorithm so I can help more people across the internet. And thank you so much for watching.